Good morning, grandkids. Well, hello, this is Janine, and I think I'll sit here and read you a story today. I wanted to read you the myths of Sheogorth. Oh, the title says that Shia Gorath invents music. Well, well, well. In the earliest of days, in a time when the world was still raw, Shia Gorath decided to walk amongst the mortals. He donned his guise of gentleman with a cane and moved from place to place without being recognized. After 11 days and 11 nights, Shia Gorth decided that life among mortals was even more boring than his otherworldly existence. What can I do to make their lives more interesting, he said to himself. At that same moment, a young woman nearby commented wistfully to herself, the sounds of the birds are so beautiful. Hmm, Shia Gorath silently agreed with her. Mortals could not make the beautiful and inspired calls of birds. Their voices were wretched and mundane. He could not change the nature of mortals, for that was the purview of other Daedric princes. However, he could give them tools to make beautiful sounds. Shia Gorth took hold of the petulant woman and ripped her asunder. Whoa, why did he do that? From her tendons, he made lutes. From her skull and arm bones, he made a drum. From her bones, he made flutes. He presented these gifts to the mortals and thus, music was born. Holy cow! That makes me think totally different about music, guys. Shia Gorath and King Lindir. King Lindir was known to be an exceedingly rational man. He lived in a palace that was a small, simple structure, unadorned with art and ugly to look upon. I do not need more than this, he would say. Why spend my gold on such luxuries when I can spend it on my armies or on great public works? His kingdom prospered under his sensible rule, however, the people did not always share the king's sense of practicality. They would build houses that were beautiful to look upon, although not necessarily very practical. They devoted time and energy to works of art. They would celebrate events with lavish festivals. In general, they were quite happy. King Lendir was disappointed that more of them did not follow his example and lead frugal, sensible lives. He brooded on this for many years. Finally, he decided that his subjects simply didn't understand how much more they could accomplish if they didn't waste time on these frivolous activities. Perhaps, he reasoned, they just needed more examples. The king decreed that all new buildings must be simple, unadorned, and no long larger than was necessary for their function. The people were not happy about this, but they liked their king, respected the new law. In a few short years, there were more plain buildings than ornate ones. The citizens used the money saved to make and buy even more 
lavish art and hold even more excessive celebrations. Well, good for them. Once again, King Lendir decided to provide them a strict example of how beneficial it would be to use their time and resources for more practical purposes. He banned all works of art in the city. The people were quite put out by this, but they knew that their king was doing what he thought was best for them. However, human nature is not so easily denied. In a few more years, the city was filled with plain, simple buildings and devoid of any sort of art. However, the people now had even more money and more time to devote to, devote to their parties and festivals. With a heavy heart, King Lindir decided that his people were to be treated like children. And like all children, they needed rules and discipline laid down by great figures of authority to make them understand what was truly important in life. He decreed that there should be, there should be no revelry in the city. Singing, dancing, and music were all banned. Even food and drink were limited to water and simple foodstuffs. Uh-oh, here it comes. The people had had enough. Revolt was out of the question since King Lindir had a very well-trained and equipped army. They visited the shrines and temples in droves, praying to all the gods and even to some of the Daedric princes that King Lindir would re Spoke these new oppressive laws. Shia Gorath heard their pleas and decided to visit King Lindir. He appeared to the king in his dreams as a field of flowers, each with arms instead of petals, and the face of the mad god in the center. I am Lord of the Creative and Lord of the Deranged. Since you have no use for my gifts of creativity, I have decided to bless you with an abundance of my other gifts. From that day forward, every child born in the city was born into madness. Since infants do not reveal illnesses of the mind, it was several years before this was realized. The king's own son was among the victims, suffering from seizures and delusions. Yet, King Lendir refused to change his ways. When his son, Blint, was 12 years old, he stabbed his father while Lendir was sleeping. With his dying breath, King Lendir asked, why? His son replied, it is the most practical thing that I could do. <laughs> there you go for practicality. The new young king ordered all the palace servants slaughtered. He ordered a grand festival to celebrate his new reign and the repeal of Lendir's laws. He served the crowds a stew made from the carcasses of the palace servants. He ordered the east-facing walls of every building painted red and the west-facing walls painted in stripes. He decreed that all citizens wear ornate masks on the backs of their heads. He then burned down the palace and began construction of a new one. In the new palace, the young king ordered his personal chambers to not have any doors for fear that small woodland creatures would attack him. That doesn't make sense to me, I'm sorry. He wants it to not have any doors so that the creatures, oh, 
I read it wrong. For f yeah, for fear that small creatures would attack it. That doesn't make sense. They could get in now even better and attack him. He ordered that it have no windows for fear that the sun and moon were jealous of him in plotting his death. Well, this is a, a crazy man anyway, so no wonder it doesn't make sense. And thus ended the line of King Lindir. The people of the city returned to their grand works of art and raucous celebrations. They talked and acted as if they still had a living king and even kept up the palace, using it to house and care for their mad children. Shia Gorth was mightily pleased with this outcome. From that day forward, the city was blessed with more than normal number of gifted artists and deranged citizens. <laughs> That's kind of funny. The Contest of Wills A mighty wizard named Ravat once walked the winds of time to find Lord Shia Gorth. His intent was to win a favor from this most capricious of the Daedric princes. Upon finding Shia Gorth, Ravat spoke humbly to him, Lord Shia Gorth, I beg a favor of you. I would gladly drive a thousand men mad in your name if you would but grant me the greater magical powers. Fortunately, for Ravat, Shilgorth was in a playful mood. He proposed a game. I will grant your wish if you are still sane in three days. During that time, I will do my utmost to drive you mad. It shall be great fun. Ravat was not so certain that he liked this new deal. He had been really looking forward to driving a thousand men mad. Lord Sheogorth, I regret having disturbed you with my shallow, selfish request. I withdraw my unfortunate plea and will humbly leave this place. Oops, Sheogorth just laughed. Too late, mighty reward. The game is afoot and you must play. Ravat fled only to find that all exits from the Daedric realm were now sealed. He wandered aimlessly, constantly looking over his shoulder, jumping at every noise. Each moment brought new terror as he waited for Shia Gorth to begin. After three days, Ravat was convinced that every plant and animal was a tool of Shia Gorth. He hadn't eaten or drunk for fear that Shia Gorth had poisoned the food or drink. He hadn't slept for fear of Shia Gorth invading his dreams, which was foolish as dreams are the domain of Vermina. May she grant us restful sleep. It was then that Shia Gorth appeared to him. Ravat cried out, you have set the whole world to watching me. Every creature and plant are doing their bidding to drive me mad. Shia Gorth replied, actually, I have done nothing. You have driven yourself mad with your fears. Your delusions prove that you are truly deranged and therefore I win. While you wanted to make a thousand men mad, I only wanted to break one man's mind, yours. From that day forward, Ravat served Shilgoreth's every whim. Whenever daring travelers to try to approach Shilgoreth, Ravat warns them, Shilgoreth is already inside each of us. You have already lost. This was really cool, guys, and I enjoyed reading it. Um, I hope you'll come and stay for story time with me again sometime.
In the meantime, I'll be wandering around my house and, or maybe taking trips to find some other book that you might like. So I will see you all in another story time. Bye-bye, grandkids.